what's up guys welcome back to clash with eric there's a lot of different town hall level attack strategies and we had you guys submit every single one of them that you know on a community post and i put them all into cards and we're gonna rank them today so i want to know which ones are the absolute best town hall level attack strategies that you should be taking into your own wars and then the ones that rank the highest we are going to go show some examples of those and i'll show you guys how to do them pulling from some of my older videos and tutorials so let's go dive into it, guys if you're new here make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel for more and let's start into this First up, I want to give a thank you to everybody who submitted a strategy onto that community post there and so we could compile this full list and I hope we got everything. If I missed one or you disagree with how I rank something, then put it in the comment section down below and then if the community agrees, then they can upvote it there. So definitely glance down there and see what people's opinion are. It's kind of interesting. And also leave a comment and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this video gets a little bit more promotion because it's going to be a good one. All right. Queen Charge Electro Dragons. I would rank this one, I'm gonna say B or C tier. I'm gonna rank it as a C tier. I don't think it's super universal. I think most people are gonna mess this up. I kind of rank it a little bit on the low side. Mass E Drags, kind of the same idea there. This attack is super, super powerful against super compact bases. And if all the bases were just total trash and super, super compact with everything packed in the middle, S tier all the way. If you see those, break out the E Drags, tear them to shreds. But against a proper warp base, I'm going to rank it right down there with the Queen Charge E Drags. Now, Queen Charge Dragons. Queen Charge Dragons has the nice advantage of. Dragons not needing near as much spell support as E-Drags. E-Drags have the same HP pool roughly as a dragon for 50% more troop space. So they rely heavily on being raged. So the rage chains will take out defenses before they shoot them. Dragons don't have that problem. And you can provide a lot of your additional spell support for other things like a full scale queen charge. I'm going to rank this one. Probably right around the same as the E-Drag attacks here. Middle of the road, nothing spectacular, but uh, definitely usable in the right scenario. All right, Skelly Donut Lalo. This one is very, very, very situational. That's where we use invisibility and skeleton spells to snipe off the CC and maybe another big target around it that we can... Uh, maybe get the Eagle Artillery or an Inferno or something next to the CC. And that's good for those bases that have the CC in the middle with maybe like the Eagle Artillery, but it's rarely used. I'm going to say this one, mm, we're going to say D territory there. Very, very, very situational. Very, very difficult to perform. Not commonly used. I'm going to rank it low. This is kind of a fun army that I do recommend breaking out if you want to have a good time. Pekka Bow Bat. Now this attack strategy has been around for a very, very long time. It is very strong. But it does require that most of the splash damage on the base there is accessible in a couple of compartments that you can charge the P.E.K.K.A.s in either a Wall Wrecker or a Log Launcher into and then sweep the backside with minimal amounts of freeze because P.E.K.K.A.s do need some spell support. Bowlers do need some spell support. So you can't sacrifice as many of those spells into bats, but you do have a lot of tanking power in that army. And so it can have a pretty strong push. And if a lot of the splash damage is closer to the entry, about halfway to three quarters of the way through the base, then you have very little on the backside and P.E.K.K.A. Bow Back can be quite strong. So I'm going to rank it maybe a B, almost A tier, not quite all the way at the top there. All right, moving on from there. Queen Charge Mass Super Barbarians. This army, I would say because you can invest every single spell into a Queen Charge, if you are an exceptional Queen Charge attacker, then you can do a whole bunch of Super Barbarians on the backside and clean up with that. But most bases are not going to allow that. I will say that's more of a meme attack, and I'm going to rank it as a D. Okay, Zap Witches. Uh, you know where this is going. <laughs> this is literally the strongest attack and the most universally strong attack in the entire Clash of Clans meta. Super insanely strong there where we just zap out the Infernos. It doesn't matter if they're single or multi-Inferno. As long as they have a little bit of other splash damage next to them, 
you zap out the inferno with anything else next to it that you can get some good value on and you're just gonna tear bases up with three golems a wall wrecker or log launcher and then a line of witches across the base spammy simple extraordinarily powerful but it's not unstoppable if they separate out their infernos from other splash damage and like maybe put storage just random instead it can stop that attack there so it's not unstoppable but generally that's the first one we're going to look at to see if that strategy works on a base and a couple other of these s tier strategies and if they don't work then we'll start to work our way down the tier list another one of those really really powerful strategies is blizzard lalo that's where we take a blimp we drop out super wizards into invisibility spells and a rage and it nukes out a compact area of the base but this does require very similar value to what we're going to see out of like a, an electron i'll talk about that in just a moment but the blizzard lalo is very very powerful but it does require that you have super wizards available for donation from a town hall 12 or higher i'm gonna rank it as an a tier because it is very very strong and it's uh, probably one of the better ones in the game there, but it is a little bit more difficult to get your your uh, CCs there. So it's not one that a lot of people are going to be using. Queen Charge Hog Miner Hybrid. This one, hands down A tier. If you like a decent Queen Charge and you can go pick off at least one major defense, whether that's the Eagle or the one of the Infernos, and you can get a CC pull and you can take out one full quadrant of a base, and then have the hogs and miners go take out the rest of it with a siege barracks to support to be able to form the other half of the funnel because the queen takes out one quadrant you need to have something to form the other half of the funnel and usually the king and a siege barracks does the trick i do not recommend this strategy for no siege machine attacks if you don't have access to a siege barracks it is severely gimped and i would honestly rank it much much lower there because the time fails so incredibly often queen charge lava loon now, this one is one of the more difficult ones to perform. You do have to manage the spell support for the Queen Charge and control her pathing and do a Lalo at the same time. Honestly, it's revered as one of the more difficult attacks in all of Clash of Clans in a whole. So I'm going to rank this one A tier because of its strength, but I'm going to kind of downgrade it from S tier because of its complexity and skill required. So if you have the skill and you practice that attack a lot, then it can be almost unstoppable, but it's not like us. It's not like spam witches. You're not just going to be able to easily just level a base there. And it's not quite as simple as the queen charge hogbinder hybrid. If you're a good queen charger, I recommend you go with hybrid over the queen charge lava loon in general. Skelly donut super archers when they have either the CC and or the Eagle Artillery in the middle of the base. You can actually destroy the CC and or the Eagle Artillery in the middle of the base more easily with a Skelly Donut using invisibility spells and skeleton spells to snipe off the CC than you could with the Lightning. So if you, if you can uh, do it that way, then I highly recommend it. But if you do have like Expos and uh, other stuff around the Eagle Artillery in the middle of the base, then you want to go with the Lightning because you can get additional value. So I'm going to rank the Skelly Donut and the Zap Super Archer attacks here about mid-tier, mainly because of their strength in no siege format. But if you do run it with a siege machine, they're generally going to be run with a siege brick, so you don't run into the time fail problems. Electron Lava Loon. Electron Lava Loon, very, very, very strong. Very similar to a Blizzard Lalo. If you like how the Blizzard Lalo flows, then you'll love how an Electron Lalo. It's just a clone or two, and you drop an Electro Dragon and a Balloon out of a blimp. The Balloon, when it comes out first, it gets cloned, and then your goal is to take out the Queen, either with the Electron or with your heroes on the side. And then you want to get the CC and you want to ideally take out at least one of the major defenses. If you're leaving up two of the multi-infernos, if there's two multi-infernos after the Electron is done, then you don't want to use two clones. You need to have some additional spell support, whether it be freezes or a heal spell to support going through two multi-infernos after the heroes and the Electron have concluded. So I am going to rank that really, really high at an A tier, but the variation of that attack where we use a cloned E-Drag out of a Stone Slammer with another few Electro Dragons in the mix there after the heroes form the funnel. Like basically you find a, an Inferno that's kind of more towards the edge of the base 
and you have the heroes clear the space around it so you can insert a stone slammer and elect dragons directly onto that inferno and then the e-drag kill squad goes in after the queen after the cc and we go after the same targets they need to go fairly deep in the base though to make that work and it is kind of difficult so uh I'm going to rank that relatively low. It's great at Town Hall 12, although it has kind of died off here in the since uh, Town Hall 13 and 14 came out. It used to be one of the more powerful attack strategies in the game at Town Hall 12, but I will rank it D. It's honestly very weak at Town Hall 11 right now, but it is fun to use if you want to give it a shot. Okay. Zap Dragons. Zap out Infernos and or air defenses the more of those that you can be zapping out together as a group the stronger this attack is going to be i'm going to rank this one as our number two attack strategies in all of clash of clans it's absolutely one of the best there is and we'll go look at some of those at the end of the video here all right queen charge miners queen charge miners is Honestly, another one of those ones that you need a Siege Barracks to make work. It can be very, very powerful, but it's subpar to the Queen Charge Hog Miner Hybrid. I'm going to still rank it really high up there. I'm going to rank it up in that A tier because it is still really, really powerful, but you do have almost all the exact same priority targets there as you do with the Queen Charge Hog Miner Hybrid. So, same basic idea. However, since the Hogs and the Miners go after different targets, Ground skellies can really, really stall this attack up where the hogs would continue to provide some cover in the area. Also, they will all stack up a little bit tighter, which makes spring traps more effective. I'd say the Queen Charge Hog Miner Hybrid is the superior version of Queen Charge Miners and out of Queen Charge Hogs. Now, the nice part about Queen Charge Hogs, which we'll jump into next, is it does free up your siege machine. You don't need a siege bricks. You generally do this one with a wall wrecker or a stone slammer or you can do a wall wrecker to support the queen charge i do rank this one a little bit lower i think to this one is kind of subpar to the other ones there i'm gonna rank it either b or c tier that's a tough call but i definitely would be using queen charge hog miner hybrid 99 percent of the time and then these ones would be less used if ever used there because of that one being so strong all right golem avalanche lots of jumps only works against single infernos single infernos burn up your golems you tossed it out there you threw it into my ranking here i made a card for it but it is an f tier strategy it is not very strong here at town hall 11 it is good at town hall 9 great at town hall 9 but it doesn't work against infernos whenever you have the infernos added in it just gets wrecked when you get to higher levels and you can zap out the Infernos and then get some Super Wizard support there, Town Hall 12 and higher, it does regain some steam here. But the regular Wizards and the Golems just don't cut it. Bat Slap Witches. This attack, hands down, is the reason why you don't see single Infernos in tournament play. If you single, see single Infernos, and even against multi-Infernos, Bat Slap is S tier 100% there. It just shreds bases. Absolutely shreds bases. Bat Slap, which is against single Infernos, is almost completely unstoppable. There's just target overload there. You, they just don't have enough punch to be able to take it down, and it will effortlessly take out 99% of single Inferno bases, but it does struggle against multis, but it is still doable. All right. Kill Squad Hog Riders, or I guess this would be Go Hobo, Go Hobo, where we do Golems, Bowlers, and then Backside Hogs. I rank this one fairly high up there. I'm going to rank it probably a B tier, borderline A tier. If you like a simpler stack strategy and you like to use some hogs and you don't know how to do a queen charge, just set up a basic funnel with a couple of golems on both sides, jump in, rage up, and then even if you don't want to use a jump, you can do a wall wrecker or a log launcher too. But I do got to warn you, if you are using a log launcher in any attack strategy and you are trying not to funnel fail, the log launcher is very slow at getting the initial wall open. So if you need to bring some wall breakers to get the very first wall open just to get your troops to start to go into the base, I do recommend that. Or you could just go straight up, bring a jump there and uh, not have to worry about that. And then you can... Uh, Maybe even throw it a siege barracks with a jump. That's also super, super strong. So <laughs> the kill squad hog riders, pretty decent, pretty decent, but it uh, all depends on what you like. 
All right. Noah's Ark. One of every troop in Clash of Clans. It's a meme army. It is a meme army. But honestly, it's, it's pretty decent there if you know how to use it. But it does require a lot of skill. It does not have too many strengths there. You kind of have to be looking for a base that it'll specifically work on to go pull off the meme. I'm going to rank it as a D tier, but I do keep it above Yellow Tron and Gold Avalanche. I don't think it's quite an F tier because honestly, it does actually work and it's kind of fun. All right, Mass Hog Riders. A little bit different there than the Go Hobo. But I don't think it's as strong as the Go Hobo. You basically just get your heroes to have to deal with the enemy queen, and they have to deal with the CC, and then you just swarm the rest of the base there with Mass Hog Riders. It could be stronger if you had Headhunters available, but since Town Hall 11 doesn't have Headhunters, I'm going to rank this one low. I have seen people use it where they bring headhunters in a siege barracks that dump out a couple of hogs and a couple of headhunters that join at the opportune time to be able to go in and take out an enemy hero on the backside. But if you can't get all the enemy heroes out of the way there, the king, the queen, and the CC, and still have good pathing, then it does struggle a little bit there. So I'm going to rank this one on the lower end i say it definitely jumps up massively as soon as you get headhunters available and then it would start to rank as a uh maybe a or even s tier for like town hall 14 and stuff like that especially with that new level of hog riders lately all right moving on from there quad quake witches only effective against single infernos relies on a lot of luck we've seen it with eight quakes i've seen it with uh quad quake you gotta have the quake value and i Honestly, I think most of the other witch attacks there are significantly stronger. I'm going to rank this one relatively low. It's more of a meme attack. I'm going to put it as a... Mm, somewhere down here. We'll put it as a delta rank in here. D. All right. Frozen Witch. Frozen Witch. Very, 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 very strong at Town Hall 10. But at Town Hall 11, it drops off. I'm going to rank this one also D tier. In Town Hall 10 attacks, I would rank this one A or potentially S tier. But at the lower levels, they just don't handle the Eagle Artillery well. And it just starts to struggle pretty significantly there. Okay. Zap Icy Witches. Now, Zap Icy Witches, I would rank this one all the way up in A tier. I know a lot of people like this strategy. I don't personally use it a lot. I'm going to rank both of these as either A or S tier. I don't know if I have very many examples of these because we haven't really covered these strategies much on the channel here. Uh, the, the, the Icy Bat Witch, that one is better against single Infernos. Uh, it struggles a lot more than the Zap one. If you have the Zap one, then we're just zapping out all the Infernos anyways, and it's very, very similar to the basic Zap Witch that we go in with all Golems. But the advantage of using Golems over Ice Golems is the Golems will maintain the tanking of the eagle artillery i say the golem version of the zap witch attack there is significantly more powerful i that's why i rank it at the top there but i do rank the ice golem version of it with like usually five ice golems a little bit of uh zap i rank that one high but not quite s tier i'm gonna put it as an a tier and i will put the icy bat which also a tier but only against single infernos. Against multis, it does struggle a little bit. Unless you can like charge both of the multis right on the entry here. Speaking of charging both of the multis right on the entry, and also good against single infernos, go bow witch. This is similar to those uh, top ones there. I recommend if you do use this one against a multi inferno, then you're engaging the multi infernos directly in the middle of the base. One at a time, you're using either jump spells and or log launcher wall record to give yourself access. And you have heal spells to push you through the multi inferno and they have to be centered on the base to make this one work. And if you can have them both kind of grouped up on one side of the base and you charge that side of the base there with the heal spells, then we combine with that and the ward ability, it can be a little bit better than the Zap Witch attack there, but it only works in very situational bases. I'm going to rank it like a B tier. It is good. It's spammy, but I don't know that I would rank it as high as these other ones here. Clone Mass Dragons. Clone Mass Dragons is 
very very extraordinarily strong at town hall 13 and 14 but it relies on the royal champion at those levels to do a lot of the backside cleanup and take out air defenses on the backside dragons in general work really really well when the air defenses are wide to the outside of the base there if you have very centralized air defenses on a base if they're all throughout the core of the base and not pushed out to the edge then dragon attacks are less powerful they they definitely rely on those air defenses being wide to the outside so that your heroes can sweep around and pick them off or you can have miscellaneous things pick them off there from the edge of the base if they're in the middle then they pick off your dragons like crazy and in those spaces lalo is going to be better because you have better anchoring positions for hounds in the middle of the base there where the defenses are and where you need the tanking so uh i am going to rank this one low i'm going to rank this one Honestly, F tier, it very, very rarely triples at Town Hall 11. I know a lot of people wanted to see this one after we saw it uh, break into the scene there at Town Hall 13 and 14, but honestly, it's it's not that great at Town Hall 11. Okay, Zap, Super Archer Smash, and Pekka Smash. Now, both of these attack strategies are almost identical. It depends. If you just have Super Archers available, then use them. You form a basic funnel with a Queen Walk, and then you... Charge the Queen's healers and the Queen and all the heroes in through a funnel all together there with the P.E.K.K.A.s and you just let them nuke out the base there. You can go in with a, I recommend you do go in with a jump rather than with a, a wall wrecker or a log launcher. So you can have the siege barracks and or a stone slammer to kind of go on the outside of the base there and provide a lot of additional support. Or even you can send those on the inside. But some hogs out of a siege barracks are very, very powerful with both of these attacks. I do rank these mid tier. I'm going to rank them probably B tier here. I'm going to rank them both B tier. Actually, I'm going to rank super archers a little bit above Pekka Smash. So I'll put Pekka Smash C tier, and I'll put Super Archers as a B tier. Queen Charge Mass Baby Dragons. The person who submitted this claimed it was a meme attack. I disagree strongly. You see the uh, Queen Charge Mass Dragon? We see that one. I ranked that one as a C tier attack. And I think this one is significantly better because if you can do a good Queen Charge and you can have the Queen with every single spell supporting her, where even if you want to use some Lightning to support her to go and set up a funnel or get some extra value somewhere, the Queen Charge Mass Baby Dragons is incredibly powerful because the Baby Dragons require zero spell support. I do rank this one as a, a B tier, but I do Again, and when you're limited to no siege machines, I would rank this one A tier. I'm going to put it B tier. I think that's a, a solid spot for it here. All right, we're getting down to the last couple attacks here. Kill Squad Lava Loon Attack. This one, honestly, one of the weaker of the Lalo attacks here and very similar to Subi Hero Lalo. I think they're both very, very powerful in the right hands, but they're... Rather difficult to perform, and a lot of these other Lalo attacks will outperform it. So I'm going to rank it uh, C tier. I'm, I'm going to rank them both about the same here. Kill Squad is basically, we have golems and maybe some bowlers and maybe our siege machine combined with the heroes to go in and take out a big section of the Aster before we start the Lalo. Whereas Sui Hero Lalo is just the heroes going with very, very minimal support there. And they just go after a key target like the queen and the CC. But you have to get the queen and you have to get the CC. Sui Lalo becomes significantly more powerful when you get to a little bit higher level and you get to Town 12 and you have some... Uh, headhunters so you can go after the enemy queen with them instead so it is good but i think it is one of the lesser used attack strategies compared to these top ones here it is drag bat drag bat very similar to the pekka bow bat however you are not limited by the shaping of the walls because you're using dragons it's like the equivalent attack strategy except for it's in the air and dragons once again do not need a lot of spell support so they can just sweep all the splash damage in a big section of the base there with the heroes providing funnel hopefully the heroes are able to get an air defense on top of that generally the basic idea of a drag bat is the heroes take out one of the air defenses 
the dragons quickly charge another one and then the other two are on the far back side because we like to attack bases with dragons that have air defenses spread wide to the outside so if you're charging one the heroes are taking one while they form the funnel and the other two aren't going to be engaging the dragons in the core of the base and they're all the way on the back side and hopefully away from a lot of splash damage not not too much there because you gotta be able to move your bats through the bats will go in and take out the last air defenses i would rank this one because of its versatility because how strong it is and because how much spell support you can have with your bats to move a massive bat wave through the base there really all you need for the dragons is one rage and then you could have as much as like six bat spells and five freezes that is my recommended way to do that but it is very 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 strong <laughs> i'm gonna rank that one as s tier all the way so i found out why i have an extra card here <laughs> kill squad lava loot was supposed to be zap lalo i do rank this one really really high because of the complexity and difficulty of lalo attacks in general it does make it a little bit more difficult to, for most players but i do think zap lalo is top tier as far as lalo attacks go i think it is the best of the lalo attacks or if i can throw it at the front of the ranking there we go so zap lalo would be the best of the lalos blizzard lalo queen charge lalo electron lalo so that's that's all of them that's all of our attack strategies and i want to know if you guys agree with them so let's go watch an attack here from each of the very very top tier strategies and i'll show you guys how to do them Okay, witches, lightning, and freezes. Let's bring it home. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to zap out both of the multi infernos on this base. I'm only going to go for one initially, and I'll grab the other one later so we don't waste too much time here. We're just going to go lightning. Boom. Boom, boom. And then we'll go golem, golem, golem. Which is across the base here. Log launcher right here. And I don't have a super wall breaker. So we're just going to deploy, delay my heroes for just one. I'm going to put the warden down though. I want this log launcher to open up the wall here before I drop in the heroes. Now. Okay. They're good. They're good. Queen. Everything going in. Good. All right. Perfect. We're going to use the lightning on the other side here. We're going to go. Oh, we're fine. Okay. So quake it out over here. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore everything that's going on on the side of the base here. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Uh, we can warden building now. As these eagle strikes are coming in, my log launcher getting away from me a little bit. Let's go ahead and snipe out these mortars on the backside. And everything looking fine. The freeze is here to protect if we need to. Got golems in good position, so I'm not really worried about that too much. Okay, and looking good. I'm gonna put this last minion. I don't know right now. If we get this air defense down, I could probably. Oh, lots of Tesla's popping out on this top side. But we're gonna pop the king to get through the trash over here. And their defense does go down, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a minion to go and get that CC down. And we're gonna lose the top flank, and I kind of planned on us losing that top flank, so that's 100% okay. Everything will leave the base here, regroup, and we will start to wrap around. Did we not get that with the minion? I guess we didn't get that with the minion. Um, just want to pay attention to splash damage over here and make sure that we stay protected through the splash damage. And I want to make sure this witch survives. So, I <laughs> get that down. All right, take it, take it, take it. I'll do another one here. Oop. I don't know what to use the freezes on. <laughs> Just use him for something, right? Keep any witches that we can alive. Um. Anyway, all right. Where are we looking next? We're we going to use the next one. Got a queen ability. We're looking nice and clean here. Queen will get that bomb tower. That's fine. That's fine. Everything's looking good, guys. Everything's looking nice and clean here. I'm going to just keep an eye on my queen here. If she gets targeted by something, then I'll maybe freeze it. I'll go ahead and freeze right there. That's a nice freeze right there. That's a, that's a nice clean freeze right there. That was, that was probably the best freeze that I've ever done in my life. It was pro probably, right? It was, it was probably the most amazing thing that I've ever done in Clash of Clans, hands down. Well, look at that. We can uh, go ahead and pop my queen as soon as she gets off uh, the skellies and we can take out the rest of the defenses. Ping, bang, 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 and boom. It's a triple. Let's go. Which is OP. <laughs> we got this. We got a queen charge with a hybrid wall break the queen but it's all the way around the corner there and he wall breaks again okay okay interesting way that he wall broke into the base there but it should get the queen to go in regardless of which way she turns here she'll fight out the cc no big deal there 
And we're hoping for Alex to defend here. And uh, maybe my little buddy right here is blocking our percentage. Can uh, give him some extra luck to defend. Move him down just slightly. Right there. Right there so we can still see the percentage, right? All right. Let's see if you can hold, buddy. The Kari coming in with the Queen through the Eagle Artillery. Got the CC out of the way here. And he's going to thin out the pathing of the Miners here very, very nicely. Look how thin the pathing for the Miners is going to be here. With the King and the Siege Barracks troops working on the outside of the base. Looking really clean here on the entry. The only potential threat here is this air defense that can target his healers. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for him here. Could lose his Queen early because of that. Doesn't have anything to go back there. He has the Queen... Having her heels getting knocked back by the sweeper, causing that to be even a bigger problem here. You know, pop her ability and try to get turned around there. She's attacking through the wall, though, and her healers are going to die. No, nope, she turns back finally, but it's too late. Healers are down. And the queen's still getting some good value, though. Look at her go over there. She's not in any threat right now. The miners are pushing through the core of the base there. She did get a lot of value before she started losing her healers, and she found safety as the miners end up passing her up there. And he's looking really, really good here. Those higher level hogs out of his siege barracks coming in late. And I guess we got the rest of the defenses. The queen will survive to the end here. Even without her healers. Apparently she didn't need them. They were just there for show and get them through the start of the attack there. Whatever. The hogs are going to turn back over to the left hand corner. And the queen charge hybrid brings it home. The key things there to this attack here is deal with the CC. Take at least one major defense out with the queen. Whether it's a multi inferno or the eagle artillery. And then, thin the pathing for the miners. Make sure their path is thin enough that they will only, they will all get healed by the heal placement. So in the space here, we got a multi inferno on one side, we got a single inferno on the other, we got the eagle artillery in the middle surrounded by expos. This area over here is a very, very high damage density area and it's full of black mines making so dragons are also going to have trouble but mainly targeting that queen charge so people would have a struggle charging in here and keeping a queen alive as she loses healer after healer to black mines and making attacks like the queen charge hog miner hybrid very very difficult but he throws a couple balloons in front of the dragons and they're catching a lot of the black mines that preserves the dragon's health he has the ward ability as soon as he gets into the meat of the base there and he is able to absorb the eagle shots or part of him at least and then he continues charging in the stone slammer comes in on the flank and he sends in an ice golem on the other side to go tank the first wizard tower allow those bats to start to group up as soon as they start to group up then they can start to one shot buildings but there's a big test of farm popping down here the ice golem starts to cross the base as the dragons continue on they're starting to get dwindled down up on the top side the dragons are taking some heavy casualties and he keeps on freezing the wizard towers that single inferno you can almost ignore it the king swept in as he rounded across the bottom of the base there and he tanked the wizard tower for just a second watches it as soon as it became untanked he froze it again and the bats were able to sweep the entire base now he went really, really heavy on the bass, really heavy on the freezes, only one rage. And I highly, highly recommend that at Town Hall level you do that. When you get to the higher Town Hall levels, sometimes 12 and 13 will kind of reverse that and will go more rages and less bats because you get a lot more bats out of every bass spell. So you don't quite need that many to start to one shot buildings. So at Town Hall 11, definitely just get a lot of bats and then keep them alive. Put those dragons into a high concentration. Oh, look at that. That's a big downside of having the bats near your other air troops those balloons and the dragons can pull red air mines and they can kill your bats luckily that didn't cause any problems here he had the base pretty much down at that point but we got to keep that in mind we want to keep the dragons and the bats separated from each other so we don't pull red mines on it so always uh like don't deploy them like over the top of each other you know keep them separated there we go. So we're going to start off with the Queen Walk. Now the Queen Walk needs to step up, take out some cannons. I want her to not have to use a Rage while she does it. And then she'll join up with the rest of the fight here. We will add the Warden. We'll add Sneaky Goblins. I do want to push her off to the right. So we will let the Warden and the Queen travel together here so they can increase their damage and they can start to work their way down on the base. We will get ready to send the King as soon as we can see which way she goes. Hopefully she'll go to the right. We have enough damage here. We should be able to control her. She is going to go down, so we will start the... Nope. Is she going to go up? Hard to tell. We've got to have a... We can fight that CC. That's fine. Okay, she is going to go down. So we're going to start this king. We're going to send the... Wall Wrecker. Start it off now. Nice skull. And... Which is... Okay. 
Okay, Popping King. Uh, rage all this up here. All right, we got the wall open we we're looking for. Now just march of witches across the base here. Be patient. So let's let them coast. Let them do their thing. Okay, same bets. Okay, we got a lot of freezes to work with here, so just keep on freezing. Wizards down behind. That's all of our or the ice comb on the backside. And we got ourselves a three star. Let's go! I start off with a couple lightnings right here. So one, two. Got that builder hut too for just for kicks and giggles, right? And we got a little bit of damage over here. Break it out. Like this one. Get a one, two. One, two. Okay. You drag up here. Thank you, goblins. Ice Golem. King. Queen. For, uh... I don't know E-Drag just do its work up there, right? It'll move on for quite a while up there. Not too worried about... Uh, oh, it's going to go actually to where the dragons. That actually works out fine. So we want to make sure when we put the dragons down, we cover every single defense on the back line here. Then we put a couple blues down. Not all of them, because we need to save some. Put the warden down. And then we're going to have the slammer come in on the... Which flank do we want to come in the slammer? I think we'll hold it for just a minute, and we'll send it in through... Uh, I don't know. Let's wait for the CC pool, though. For now. Warded now. Good. And they'll send the slammer down here, I'm thinking. I right, do have that Tessa farm where I predicted it would be. Remember that? All right, we got a freeze. We got a couple of balloons. Get a couple of minions up by the town hall, right? And let's get an archer in this far corner. We're looking good right now. Wait for this uh, backside air defense here. We'll hold on to the balloons and the freeze for it, all right? We could use haste with it, I suppose, but... Well, look at the slammer. Oh, no. Good. Get it down. Boom. Got it. All right. It's easy day. Easy day, guys. Crushing it with dragons. As we're talking about. If you ever see air defenses next to infernos. And you can uh, potentially reach some of the air defenses near the edge of the base there. The reason the bases are built like that is to make it more difficult for Lalo. Because whenever you see air defenses very central on the base, like all mixed into the defenses, then you know that you're going to have good anchor positions for hounds to tank for Lalo. But when the air defenses are pushed to the outside, it makes so dragons are very, very powerful against them. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming out and checking out this tier list if you guys like this and you want to see more of them then put a comment down below and tell me what you want me to rank and i will try to make a video and uh fulfill that request so thank you so much if you guys are new here hit that like button subscribe to the channel and if you want to help support the channel then don't forget to use code eric take it easy guys we'll see you in the next one